Hey guys, it's Sip with SVTPerformance.com. As you can see, we've got the Bronco Raptor back on the dyno at Five Star Tuning here in Florence, South Carolina. I know it's been a little while since we've put a video up on the channel. Been kind of busy with life and other little projects going on. I do have a bunch of videos shot that I need to release though, so you guys will see that in the coming weeks, months, and whatnot. But today, you can basically guess what we're doing. Five Star Tuning has put together a little program where they can go in and unlock a factory ECU and then it allows them to program with HP tuners. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. They uh, just take a factory Ford ECU, do their electronic wizardry, remove the encryption features from it, and then it allows them to flash it with HP tuners like any other uh, Ford that we've known in years past before the encryption stuff really took off. So as long as you've got a little HP tuners tuning device, you can do it with RTD. I got a MPVI, two, three. I'm not sure what exact models they have to have, but I know an RTD and an MPVI three will work with this. So this is an option. It's a more complicated option, but it gets us to where we want to go, and that is being able to custom tune this Bronco Raptor. So we're going to try a few things put their tune in this. They've already tuned one. We know that it is dialed in. It's going to make a lot of power, but the one that they've shown before was stock. And of course, our Bronco Raptor is far from stock. So we've got Whipple intercooler right up front here, SPD down pipes. And we've also, we've got the factory intake on it now, but look what we've got to test as well. So after we get the tuning in, run it the way it is now we're going to see what the s and b intake will do with hp tuners five star custom tune and then we may play around with some other stuff i don't know we'll see if time allows but for right now we're going to get these ecus changed out get this thing flashed up run the rollers see how she does so we've got the new ecu in place and brandon's doing a little bit of tweaking with some of five stars various softwares they're using to get this job done figured now would be a good time for me to check out the oil level in my little homemade JNL OSC oil separator setup. I've had different versions of this. This is kind of the final one that I came up with using some more parts from JNL and a few of my own little spare pieces I had laying around the house. But let's just take a look and see how much we've collected here. Uh, yeah, I'd say it's working. That's that is a decent amount of oil collected there, so better in this can than in the intake or intercooler or anywhere else besides either in the sump or in this can, so glad that's working out. We've made a few pulls and this is what we got so far uh, making our best run horsepower wise made almost 459 horsepower 541 pound feet of torque uh, it's very consistent it wants to make in that range just about all the time we had one run that was uh, sort of aborted it just uh, we didn't pull all the way that was one of the first runs it actually made as you can see way more torque on that run but we cut it a little bit short so it didn't get the horsepower numbers so that one was at like 563 pound feet of torque so another almost 20 pound feet of torque in there so it's also hotter right now and 95.5 degrees on the dyno yeah 25 percent humidity yeah and uh getting a little bit of uh you know it's pulling timing a it's little bit pulling a degree and a half yeah so, so so a degree and a half, at how much boost is it running now? It's, uh, peak is about 22. All right, so a degree and a half of timing at 22 pounds of boost. That's every bit of 20 horsepower. Yeah, so you know. we, I may have some questionable fuel in it right now. That could be what it is. Um, could yeah. just be because it's hot. Very it, well. Uh, could be both. But one thing we're gonna do, since we've got the stuff here, it's a modified we're gonna put a little more air to it. So let's get some more air. We've got S and B intake. Give that a shot. All nice roto-moded stuff. Way bigger air box. 
So get this factory one out of the way, give yep. it a shot. So the S&B air box, it's a nice rolled motive piece. You of course got your scoop in the front just like the Raptor does from the factory. But check this thing out. Air filter it comes with is an enormous upgrade in surface area over the factory paper one. So if there's any restriction at all in that factory intake, this thing ought to fix it. And not only do you have the air box, this thing comes with lots of tubing that's much larger than factory as well. So. Looks like a pretty good setup. Comes with nice rubber intake for your air scoop, all that good stuff. The big thing I'm looking forward to with this is this thing should sound way spicier than that factory sealed air box with the paper filter and all that. That's one of my favorite things about adding a cold air intake is just the extra sound you get, like that induction noise, especially on turbo or supercharged engines. That is uh, pretty nice. If you guys are interested in one of these, Five Star Tuning has them in stock. Ship you one out today. All right, we've got everything from the SMB kit laid out here on the table and some of the factory stuff. So this is what I'm talking about in the increase in surface area. I mean, that is a huge difference. Not only that, every pipe you see, everything you see here is just much larger on the SMB. Like this is a good example. This is, that component factory like much much smaller we've got much more volume on all of this stuff so that should be nice nice smooth radiuses all good quality stuff there uh, and then just the enormous amount of added volume we're getting in this air box versus that one i mean you can see how shallow that is but one thing i am really happy that ford does on most new vehicles now is include some sort of air scoop to get fresh air in, so that's nice. with the SMB intake and the results are they're solid so at the top end she picked up about 25 horsepower and about the same torque it all starts at about 4200 rpms and we saw this previously just running down the track at a drag strip we knew this thing needed more airflow and that definitely got it on the top end you can see it just starts to pull away from the before curve but the big thing is we're still pulling about a degree and a half of timing so theory is now that the fuel that i have in it is just not as good as it needs to be it's 93 but you know every gas station is different uh, josh has his favorite here locally he likes bp fuel that's not what's in this thing but we're going to see if we can sweeten the mix up just a little bit add some boosting just a touch just enough to tell us if it's the fuel or something else could be false knock from something i have added on you know from something else could be anything but if it picks up that degree and a half of timing just by putting a very very small amount of boost stain in the tank then uh, we'll know for sure so next time we'll play with uh, some different fuel in it and we do have some stuff planned for next time so definitely uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see what we have coming up next Steady hands now. Yeah. That's a very little bit. Let's see if that helps. I think it needed some better gas in it. <laughs> yeah. it
think we proved our theory correct on this one. <laughs> yes, sir, we did. All right, so the whole idea was I had not the best gas in it. Uh, I mean, we put what? Just a tickle. Just, I mean, not you, even saw, a fifth. you saw it on the video, yeah. like how small of an amount we poured in there. And it had over a quarter of a tank of fuel in it, so just a little bit. And picked up almost 40 horsepower, went from 467 to 503, and another 20 pound feet of torque, and it picked it up everywhere. So, looking back at the data log, and that's one of the things, too. This has been the same tune on all these runs. You yeah. can't make any I haven't made any adjustments at all. And uh, we were looking for that degree and a half of timing that yeah. kept pulling out of it. Well, got that back, and then it added what, two more degrees? Yeah, right at two degrees. So, for just that tiny bit of boosting, probably to bring us up to what it should be, good 93. Good 93 typically on 21, 22 pounds on these motors normally runs seven degrees, six and a half degrees of timing. Yeah. So, I mean, they can push up to seven and a half, eight, depending on how good your 93 is, but that's pretty impressive. Yeah. So, basically, we got enough of that in it to treat it like it's good 93. And that's what we ended up with. But over 500 horsepower, 562 pound feet of torque. That's pretty solid. And I'm going to back that up next time we come out. I'm going to go to Josh's preferred station, fill it up with, or at least get half a tank of 93 there. And then we'll take and run it and see where we're at and see where we stand without the boost thing. Yeah. And then maybe play with some ethanol or something like that. Maybe, maybe like some E50. Maybe yeah. go, go to the track, you know, things like that. But I think that's a, that's a pretty good win for today. And just because I know people are going to complain that we're running it with the uh, the lid off the S&B intake. We'll go ahead and pop that lid on there and make one more run to back it up and just see what it does. And That'd have, be we'll good. have a little bit of fun there. Back oh. to our numbers. All right, you saw we stuck the lid on it, and this was basically a back-to-back -back run. You know, how long does it take to put a plastic lid on? About, about two, ten, three, two, three minutes. What, maybe 10 minutes between the two runs. Yeah. Maybe. And it cost us seven, eight horsepower. And realistically, uh, that's basically the difference you get just in a back-to-back -back run. So I don't think you're any advantage really to running with the lid off. Lid off a little. Especially if you're, down the road. if you're driving down the road, you'd never know. So I mean, look, it was all right there. That at, one at, spot. At the one spot at the top. So if you're going down the road, it's going to be getting enough airflow. Lid on. It's probably better off with the lid on to not be sucking. You have, you have cooler road. intake air temperatures for yeah, sure. So. But at the end of the day, she made right at 500 horsepower and 560 pound-feet of torque. I th I'm confident in saying that's the number you can expect with good 93. Bad 93? Bad 93 going to cost you. It's going to cost you a little bit. I mean, well, when you're talking 22 pounds of boost on the top end, that's that couple degrees of timing is a lot of power. Yes, sir. She's coming in hard. Yeah. But like we said, that was all with your tune. We didn't do, have to do any revisions to it. No revisions, Nothing. right out the box. So, if people were interested in this particular tune for a Bronco Raptor, it's ready. It's ready. Give Five Star Tuning a call if they can hook you up. Like I said, this is not as simple as tuning used to be. You're not going to be able to send them a device and. No, you got to have FDRS. It's got to be a PCM swap. Yeah. It's HP tuners. You got to have an RTD. So there's steps involved. That's what you're trying to say. There's a little bit of steps. You, you got to have some special software or Ford. Yeah. Go to Ford and have a hookup at Ford. Or yeah. Typically, what we're doing is our dealers across the country to have access to FDRS. We're we're doing that yeah. with them. So that's basically what you're going to end up dealing with uh, if you want to tune one of these custom tune it. The intake we showed that definitely worked. It definitely needed the. Up top, 4,000 and above, it needed it, for yeah. sure. So, if you want the S&B intake, where can you get one of those? Right here at Five Star Tuning. We also, uh, on this particular vehicle, we got the SPD downpipe. Yep. SPD downpipe uh, with the Jesse Cats, that makes a difference, and the Whipple intercooler. Whipple intercooler is a huge gain on these for yeah. reliability. 
yeah so next time around we're going to play get some better fuel for sure in it to start with just to back up the science that we're trying to work out here exactly and, and uh, keep in mind it's 96 97 degrees here yeah. that's why we keep sweating yeah, so now it's just yeah. hot we're sweating yeah it's, um, it's steamy it's south carolina even though it's april it gets hot it gets hot so yeah. And, uh, but like I said, we're going to put some different fuel in it when we come back. Hopefully repeat these numbers. That's exactly what we want to do is hit within a few horsepower of these numbers. That'll prove out what we're, our theory our is. Our theory here. Yep. And then uh, we'll just keep adding and changing things and then try to back it up with a track run. And then go do some E50 and go lay some 12s down that track. Yeah, that's right. All right. We'll see you next time. Thanks for checking out the video. Appreciate it.